Just yesterday, Minecraft released their Minecraft beta and preview 1.19.80.20. In this preview, there is a lot of things that have changed. As you can see, we have some cherry grove changes, uh, changes to the pots, brush, suspicious stand, a lot of stuff that's going to be coming to Minecraft 1.20. But by far the biggest thing that has changed or has been added is the ability for players to now test out the bedrock editor if you don't know what the minecraft bedrock editor is well in minecraft's own word the bedrock editor is a multi-block editing experience that allows you to easily craft high quality worlds in minecraft bedrock the editor is available in the preview edition of minecraft bedrock and you can get the to the user interface through a shortcut you create on your computer desktop basically it's world edit but on bedrock now the bedrock editor is kind of tricky to get installed and get properly working but if you already have it installed you can skip to this time right here on screen to learn how to use it the first step in getting the minecraft bedrock editor is you have to be on a device that can install and open the minecraft launcher once you're here you do not want to go to the java tab but you want to go to the minecraft for windows tab and then at the top go to preview if you don't have it installed it'll take just a few short minutes to install the minecraft bedrock preview edition of the game but once you have this installed do not click play there is one more step you have to do to actually get the bedrock editor as it is not located inside of the actual bedrock preview game once you have the preview installed you want to go to your desktop on windows right click and go to new now depending on what version of windows you're on it might look a little different but this is how my menu looks you then want to find the shortcut option click it to make a brand new shortcut and then enter the following it is minecraft colon question mark editor equals true now that is all there is to it you want to click next and name it whatever you want minecraft be for bedrock editor click finish this is the one i already had made uh for me i double click this to open it and how you want to open this, you need to select Minecraft Preview. If you click Minecraft, it's gonna open using the default latest release of Minecraft and not the preview version. So you need to make sure you open it using the Minecraft Preview version. I'm gonna unselect Always Use this app to make sure every time I open it, I can double check that it's to the preview version. Click OK, and then it is going to launch to the Bedrock Editor of Minecraft. As you can see right now, there is no home screen. You will know this has worked if all you have is projects, friends, and servers. Obviously, with servers turned off, the Worlds tab has now been named to Project, as well as Create New Project. These are all signs that it did end up working, and you're currently running the Minecraft Bedrock Editor version of Minecraft. If you had any issues installing it, I will leave this article down below in the description, where it goes through some commonly asked questions and troubleshooting issues so if you didn't get it on the first try i'll leave this link down below in the description so you can double check with what microsoft recommends now once you have everything open and running you want to go ahead and click on create new project once you're here you can go ahead and change all the settings about your minecraft world and since i don't plan on making this an actual playable world i'm just going to go to creative and set it to peaceful as well as any other advanced or cheat options i would like to modify and one thing i will do is just create it always day and weather cycles so we don't have to deal with that while editing stuff you can then name it to whatever you would like and then click create and it does look like a version of being able to edit online worlds is coming as there is a pop-up saying during online editing Editing, you may be exposed to chat messages uh but obviously i'm not online so that doesn't pertain to me at the moment but once you have loaded up you are going to get bombarded with a ton of different pop-ups and a ton of different things that just does not look super minecrafty uh now first off if you're wondering how did i get my color scheme like this you can just go to file ui settings in the top left and then change your theme to what you think looks the best there's dark mode there's light which is just disgusting there's redstone which is what i just had on and high contrast for me i think redstone's the cleanest and it's the easiest on the eyes and whenever you're done with this you can just exit out or if you would like to make uh, the scale of the ui smaller or larger uh, once you really get down the controls you could probably turn down the ui scale and that will allow you to give you more space on your screen for actually editing the blocks but for now i'm going to keep it at 100 so you guys can see everything that i'm doing on screen so this is what's going to look like when you open minecraft bedrock editor you're going to have your quick start menu up here which i do highly recommend you all browse through i will also leave another article link down below in the description and this is a full comprehensive guide from minecraft and mojang on how to use each and every feature of the bedrock editor i'm assuming there's some small details i'm going to miss out in this video today and so if if you want to know every little tidbit of how to use the advanced mechanics 
then I will leave that down below in the description. But for movement, all you have to do is hold down the right click on your mouse and use your WASD, shift and space keys. And this will allow you to freely move around and look around your world. For the selection, there are a variety of different tools that I will show you in just a moment on how to use. For the tools themselves, we have just at the moment a brush tool that is all we've been given and the ability to copy and paste different selections. And for action, they're pretty standard when it comes to Windows, where you have Control C, Control V for copy and pasting. You have Control Z and Y for undoing and redoing your edits, and Control X or Control C for cutting and copying once again. So once this is out of the way, I would just minimize this using the two up arrows. That way, in case you forget anything, you can come back. There's also a crosshair mode you see in the top right hand corner. You can target this by doing Control Tab or just by clicking on it. Once you're in crosshair mode, it basically puts you uh, as a minecraft character you don't have to hold down right click to do this you are just a minecraft character roaming around the world to get out of this mode all you have to do is press escape and you are back in this menu but the first thing i'm going to show you guys is the selection tool in minecraft and how each of the different modes work so if you head up to the little box with the dotted lines this easy selection box there are three different modes there's free form which you can use by just clicking on a certain point in the world and then finding another point in space that you would like to select. Uh, as you see, if you just click points uh, you and you, or you click and drag, it does not make a bigger or larger selection. You will have to hold down shift when you make your second selection. This will allow you to actually select a larger space within the Minecraft world and not just a single block. So once again, if you're clicking around trying to get points to be highlighted, it won't work. You have to click the first point and then shift click the second point and it will give you this box. The next feature within the selection tool is what they're calling the gizmo. This basically gives you a physical Y, Z, and X representation within Minecraft, and you can control it by just clicking and holding and dragging in whatever direction you want to expand your selection. So let's say I want to span it out in the X direction or in the Z direction. I can do so by just simply clicking and dragging, and as you can see, the selection gets bigger. Another thing you could do to alter the size of selections is by going over here to the selection box on the left hand side and manually enter coordinates. But if I would like to make it a five by five box, I can manually type in how big of a selection I would want. And this right here is the origin of it. So right here in the center, this is the origin of the selection. If we move the origin, let's say to negative 186, it shifts a few blocks to the left. And so you guys are definitely starting to understand how the selection tool works. There is also a fixed distance selection, which I am not a huge fan of. And so what the fixed distance mode is, it sets a distance apart from the user. And no matter where I look in space, it looks like this selection is around four blocks away from me. But using my scroll wheel, I can make it so that the selection is further away. So you could probably use this to make circles and other uh, geometrically symmetrical shapes. So as you can see, we're looking around, it's further away. We scroll in and it gets closer. I personally think the free form is the easiest and the most understandable tool to work with. And so the last selection is pretty simple. It is the adjacent one. Basically, it just selects the block of air adjacent to the closest solid object. So you can see this grass block. We can't actually click on the solid grass block. We only can click on the air right next to it. So it's a little confusing. Personally, I just think using free form, uh, it's a much easier way to get a grasp of things. Now, once you have something selected that you want to fill in, the only tool we have right now is the fill tool. So you can see fill selection. And right here, we can, let's say diamond ore. We fill it. We click fill selection and well, bada bang, we now have ourselves a good group, good chunk of diamond ore. We're going to reselect the area. And once again, it doesn't matter how big of a selection you make. If you fill it, Minecraft Bedrock Editor will fill this entire thing with the block of choice. Now, let's say we really love this block of diamond. We could use control C to actually copy the diamonds. You can see selection copied. And let's say I want these diamonds over here. We can Put it down, we are already in the paste menu. So this gives you an idea of where your selection is gonna be pasted. You can click confirm paste or control V and it will paste your selection, pretty standard stuff. But you can also rotate this as you see fit up to 270 degrees you can mirror it on the x or mirror on the z and so you have a lot of different ways you can copy structures like let's say village houses over here would be a great thing to copy and paste in a world and lastly we have one of the most fun features the brush feature 
So right now we are set our brush size to three. I wonder if there is any cap. Uh, maybe I think 10 might be the largest size or it's actually a scroll. So 16 is the largest brush size and it basically, oh my goodness, it's huge. It gives you a pretty much 16 by 16 brush or, uh, you know, a six by six or a three by three brush. And it allows you to literally click and drag anywhere on your screen uh, and paint with this brush as if you're in a Microsoft Paint. It will then fill in this brushed area with the block of choice. So similarly, we can do, let's say, Glowstone, so you can really see it. Uh, we can go ahead and just paint all around with Glowstone, and you can see the light updates in real time, the Minecraft lighting. So this Bedrock Editor is very smooth. It's very lag-free, and so it kind of works as fast as your imagination and your technical skills can get around to it but something really cool is you can make hollow things so one of the best examples i've seen of this is getting a big brush size of glass and then just painting it all hollow so once we actually go inside of this you'll see it's hollow now it is a little bit weird because when you're doing multiple brushes in a row it's creating multiple hollowed out selections uh so you could just click once and if you go inside of here, it is hollow. It is a glass cage. And so I guess you could just strategically click every few blocks. It definitely is a little bare bones at the moment. And more experienced map builders are probably better off using World Edit in Java. But I do love the fact that they are giving such groundbreaking and revolutionary tools to every player on Bedrock who wants to try to use them for themselves. So let's say you think this is perfect and you're happy with your world. You don't go appear to world options or help. Uh, edit is where all of the different control commands are located if you ever get confused, but you go up to file, click export as playable world, and this will save your world as a playable file on your computer that you're able to export uh, to, you know, a Google Drive, a friend, a website, wherever you want to share it, you can share it so that it's playable elsewhere. And once you want to leave, if you click the escape button, it will do absolutely nothing. You have to go to file, pause screen, and this will give you uh, the typical uh, pause setting screen in Minecraft. So you can actually edit your settings if you want to. Uh, I don't want to. I want to save and quit and get out of the Bedrock Editor because we are all done and all good for today. And as you can see, Subscribe Ducky is here and we can change other things about it like normal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. There's a whole lot of amazing things one can do with the Bedrock Editor. And once again, I'm really happy that Minecraft have added it in this pre-release. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you sub because I'll definitely be releasing more in the future around the Bedrock Editor. With all that being said, though, it's been a boy, Ducky the Gamer, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Deuces!